Hello guys and welcome back to Planet 40k and Happy New Year to you all. We're going to be carrying on with our Necron stuff for now. We're going to jump into the Codex and go through some... We're not going to be doing reviews anymore, we're going to be doing something a little bit different, but that's for another time. Today we're going to be doing a list build. Now I've got a 2000 point Hypercrypt Legion list for you today. Now I've had some success for it, with it. I've had some success with it because I've played a few games now and I've actually got perfect scores with them. 100 points in both the games. So, I kind of want to slightly modify it. I know that sounds crazy because when you get perfect scores, what you modify them. But there were a few units that I think could do more. But I'm going to give you the list. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. And then I will be doing a bat report with this very list. Maybe adding the modifications from the comments. Depends what the modifications are. And we'll be doing a bat report in January at some point. So we'll see how we get on with that. So yeah, this is just my personal list, guys. This is not any meta. I don't have as, you know, I'm not, I've not got a lot of experience with this codex just yet. I've been doing all the, you know, the daily videos through the countdown to Christmas. I've not had that many games under my belt. So don't take it as gospel. It's just purely my list. And if you can help me upgrade it, brilliant. So let's get into it. 2000 points, Hypercrypt Legion. This is the detachment where you can bounce in and out from your opponent's turn, come back in in your reinforcement step. And with 2000 points, you can do it with three units or up to three units, and they can't be in engagement range. They're the units you can do. And you effectively put them in strategic reserves and bring them back on your turn. So I'm going to do this unit by unit. That's obvious. Obviously, I'm going to do it unit by unit, but I'm going to be telling you the character and the unit that it's going to go with rather than tell you all the characters and then tell you all the units. Then you've got to kind of work it out. I'll just tell you what I'm doing. So the Warlord for this list is Imatek the Stormlord. I wanted to try Imatek out and I just threw him in there and yeah, it's kind of working for me. He's 100 points. He's got the new model, of course, which mine's actually in the spray booth at the moment. So I've not got it to hand, but it is a cool model. You know, it's got all the standard overlord kind of stuff. Toughness 5, 2 plus armor, 4 plus invulnerable, 6 wounds. He's got quite a decent amount of weaponry. because He's got two ranged weapons, which is the Gauntlet of Fire which is basically a torrent that ignores ignores cover. Strength 5, minus 1 AP, 1 damage, so a nice little bug killer. Shouldn't say bug killer anymore because we're not fighting against Tyranids anymore, and that has all been done. But going up against standard guardsmen and things like that, he's doing all right. And the staff of the Destroyer, which is his sort of main range weapon, slightly better range, 18 inch. Three shots with it, but you're hitting on two. Strength 6, minus 3 AP, 2 damage. So now if you are firing against the standard Space Marine armor, toughness 4, you're wounding them on 3s, minus 3 puts them on a 6 plus armor, 2 damage takes them out. So it's decent at range. The melee weapon is also the Staff of the Destroyer, but it's got dead wounds. 4 attacks, hitting on 2, strength 6, minus 3, P, 2 damage. The, the exact same profile as the, as the ranged weapon, except you get 1 extra attack, because you've got 4 attacks versus 3 shots, and it's dead wounds. He's of course going to be giving you 1 CP per every single command phase, additional CP that is. So you get your standard CP, and then you get 1 extra because you've got Imatech on the battlefield, which is pretty much the main reason for taking Imatech really. Because if you if you just take a standard Overlord, you've got Resurrection Orb options, or you've got the Translocation Shroud options, this guy doesn't have that stuff, but the CP can come in handy. He's of course also got the Lord of Storm ability, so it's only once per battle, but you can throw out mortal wounds within 12 inches, which is a nice added bonus to his damage output. So that's the, the Warlord, and he is going to be going in a unit of 10 Immortals. 10 Immortals with the Tesla Carbines, that's my go-to at the moment. I think that's a lot of people's go-to at the moment. Tesla is very good. So that's going to cost 140 points for the, the Immortals there. They've of course got the Tether Carbines, which have Assault and Sustain hits 2. Only 24 inch range, but you've got 2 shots per model, so that's 20 shots with the maximum unit. Hit on 3, Strength 5, no AP, 1 damage, and you're re-rolling wound rolls over 1. Maybe all the wound rolls if the enemy's on an objective marker. Yeah, there's not really much synergy with Imatech and the actual Immortals there. It's just that you need to put a unit. You don't have to put a unit with Imatech, I suppose, but he's not got Lone Operative or anything, so he's just going to get picked off. So you'd rather hide him in a unit. He's basically a CP farm. Now to make this sort of synergy work for the Immortals, I'm going to be adding a Plasmancer. Now the 55 point Plasmancer or the 55 point Cryptek 
He's good in the unit. His toughness four, but you're using the bodyguard's toughness, which is toughness five. So you're actually improving his toughness, even though it only really matters for precision. But yeah, toughness five from four. Harbinger of Destruction is the main reason to take a Plasmancer, so any unmodified hit rolls of a 5 will score critical hits when you've got sustained hits. One going off, every 5 plus roll is three, well, 2 additional hits, so 3 hits in total for every one of those. That's the main reason for taking the Plasmancer. He's of course got Living Lightning to throw out Mortal Wounds, very similar to him at Tekken Fact, so they'll both be doing that. And the Plasmic Lance, which is okay at range, and not too bad in melee for a Cryptic anyway. Now I'm going to be improving the Plasmancer with an enhancement which is the Osteoclave Fulcrum. 20 points to make him 75 points. And what this does is effectively gives the entire unit Deep Strike. Bear in mind this is the Hyper Crypt Legion. We're going to be coming in and out, in and out, pretty much when, when we please, every single battle round. Uh, we can do it from Street Reserves, from the side of the board. But with Deep Strike you've got a bit more flexibility where you actually bring the unit back in. So that's why we're going to be adding that 20 point enhancement. Now originally in this list I wanted the new Overlord with the Translocation Orb and I kind of took him out because we've already got like the speed, well we don't necessarily need the speed, we've got the hyperphasing now. So the speed of the, the Translocation Orb when you're getting the auto advance of 6 inches, you don't necessarily need it in this detachment so that's why I've taken him out for Imotech. I think the CP is going to be more important when you've got Cosmic Precision as an example and there's a few more bit things that we'll talk about later on. But yeah, Cosmic Precision is probably the main one. I mean, when you've got Immortals, they're OC2 each and you've not got that 9 inch restriction if you use Cosmic Precision as a stratagem because you can now come more than 3 inches away rather than 9 inches away. So you could potentially be getting toes on an objective with OC2. So let's move into the next character within this list, and of course it's one of the Katans. It's the Nightbringer, my favourite Katan. He is back with a vengeance in this codex, and he is an auto-include at this moment in time. I'm pretty sure he will go up in points. He is way too cheap, and it, you know I shouldn't really be saying that as a Necron player, but he's 300 plus easily. Easily. But for now, 255. Bargain. Now he's only moving 6 inches, but we're hyperphasing. Doesn't really matter too much, as long as we can make a 9 inch charge. Toughness 11, 4 plus invulnerable save, 5 plus feel no pain save, 12 wounds, very resilient. Also halving damage as well, which he actually retained that ability, which I find incredible, when he gained the 5 plus in, uh, feel no pain save. Good at range with the gaze of death, incredible in melee with the Scythe of the Nightbringer. D6 plus 2 damage now, it's not just D6 damage anymore. And the dead wounds is of course still there. Drain life is the other ability to be throwing out more mortal wounds on a 4 plus and yeah he's just an absolute animal and no matter where you hyperphase him in your opponent is not gonna like it. Of course he's not got deep strike so you're gonna have to use the side you know the table edge you can't just be throwing him in anywhere but what's great about this is he's only got a 40 mil base. The void dragons on the big base I can't remember what the size of that is is it 60? 90? I can't remember but the Nightbringer's on the small 40mm base because it's an old model. So it's very easy to sneak him in anywhere, pretty much, on the table edges. And even if, like, okay, you've got a 9-inch charge, you want to go for the 9-inch charge, even if you fail it, and maybe you go for the reroll, and even if you fail that, it's going to take almost your opponent's entire army to at least try and take him down. There's a chance, but it's not easy it's like we've just mentioned all of his defense mechanisms and if you come in say behind some sort of line of sight blocking terrain you could literally nullify a lot of your opponents shooting attacks and they're not going to really want to charge the nightbringer are they so you have to be a little bit tricksy with the nightbringer when you bring him in but once he's in and he gets into a fight yeah beast absolute beast next on to the third unit we've got a technomancer of course you know where this is going but the technomancer is 60 points He's got the 10 inch movement, not got loan operative anymore, but he's got rights of reanimation. So 5 plus Furno Pain save for a unit, which is the main reason to take him. And he heals a model, D3 lost wounds. It's not reanimation, so it doesn't bring back models, but it does heal the model. So that will happen in the movement phase after reanimation, which was the command phase. Staff of Light in melee and at range is pretty, you know, whatever. Doesn't do a lot. Every now and then it chips off a wound. You don't bring in from the damage output. Really, you bring him for potentially enhancement, which, which I don't have today. But the feel no pain save is the, the, the thing you, what you want here. Now he's of course going with six Canoptic Wraiths, it's just the standard now. I think that's 
what's going to happen until their points probably go up as well. They're probably slightly too cheap. 220 points for six. I think they're too cheap, to be honest with you. They have taken the spot of the Lich Guard. These guys move 10 inches as well, but their toughness six. Toughness six with a four plus invulnerable save on top of the three plus armor save. Four wounds apiece now. That's why I think they should go up because four wounds each is a lot. They used to only have three. You could argue, you know, you know Terminators with shields are, are four wounds, but they're only moving quite slow. Yes, they've got deep strike, but once they're in, they're in, right? But these things are moving 10. They're moving 10. I think it's different. Now, what I'm going to be doing in this list, I'm going to be putting the particle casters on my wraiths, which is, has devastating wounds. It's a pistol weapon. Three shots a man, or a wraith. Hit on four, strength five, no P1 damage. Dev wounds, pistol. So you can shoot it into engagement range. It's basically like extra attacks if you're still in engagement range. Or you're just going to be firing it on entry, I suppose, before you make the charge. you just got to be a bit careful with that. If your opponent starts removing models that are at the front of the pile, it's going to make your charge range a bit harder. So ideally, you want to come in from strategic reserves if you're doing the hyperphasing. Or just move up your 10 inches, but shoot a different target so that your charge range isn't it's not increased. And then they've got the Wraith Form ability, which I actually got this ability wrong in our countdown to Christmas. I was corrected by, I think it was Vivian actually, was it Vivian? I think it was Vivian. Uh, each time this model ends a normal move, you can select an enemy unit it moved over during that move, and you roll a d6 for each model in this unit. That's the bit I got wrong. It's a bit wordy. Once you kind of get it, you get it, but it's talking about the Wraith unit and not the, the unit that you've just moved over, which is kind of an easy mistake to make. So if you've got a six, six Wraith unit, if you like, a six-man unit, that would be six dice. So what I said in the video is if you flew over like 20 Necron Warriors, that's 20 dice. It doesn't work like that. So for every four plus, they suffer a mortal wound. So it's going to pretty much be a maximum of six if you roll really good. An average of three, which is probably what it should be, really. That sounds a bit more correct. So yeah, this is the go-to unit. The defense mechanisms are just madness, the in-run save, the 5 plus win, no pain save, toughness 6 with 4 wounds. They're moving rapid at 10 inches, they can shoot, they can fight. Lich Guard are just getting shelved at the moment because they can't do all those things at the same time. So what I'm going to be doing is either jumping onto primary objectives with these wraiths and just hold ground because they can do what Lich Guard used to do with the shields, they've got the in-run right? Or I'll go deleting infantry units. In fact, I don't think I mentioned what melee weapon I've got. I've gone with the Vicious Claws, if you won't. Where that's just the easily the, the best weapon there. Which has strength 6, minus 1 AP, 2 damage. So it's an infantry killer, space marines, and anything worse, I suppose. So yeah, you'll be either holding primaries or going around deleting infantry. That's sort of the main thing now. You could say, why haven't you got 2 or 3 units of these? I just wanted 1 for now. I'm going to see how I go. The next unit, this one is a bit of a weird one. Well, like, it feels weird, but I've come to terms with it that I don't think it is to me anyway. I've gone with 20 Necron Warriors, and I've gone with the Gorse Flayers. Now, you could change the Gorse Flayers out for the Gorse Reapers. I'm sort of you know, flipping the coin at this point to which one. Because on one hand, you can get extra AP, and if you're hyperphasing in, then you're pretty much going to be within 12 inches. On the other hand, maybe you're not selecting them to be hyperphasing in. And you've got 24 inch range with the flayers, which gives you a bit more of a, a selection or a choice with, with what your target is. So I've gone with the flayers. There's not much in it, but I just wanted the extra shots at, well, at range. I just wanted to have more range with better targets. Now their reanimation protocols has slightly been dampened because you don't get the D6 or D3 plus 3 anymore. It's just you get to re-roll it. That's all it is. Now, I know what you're thinking, Warriors suck at the moment, their reanimation has just been hindered a lot, it's been massively nerfed in this codex, and you're right, it has. But I use them differently now, I don't use them as this indestructible brick wall that your opponent may or may not be able to clear. Now I just use them as meat shields, they're just meat shields. They pretty much clog up the central area of the battlefield for me, so they're going to be on primaries potentially, and they're going to be shielding the bigger units. They're going to be shielding from deep strike units, maybe strategic reserves if they're on the side of the board, but I want them in the middle to be honest with you. And your opponent just simply can't ignore them because they're OC2 per model and you've got 20 of them. If, the, if your opponent isn't careful, these things are going to rack up points, so they do need to deal with them. 
The problem is, this is the hypercrypt legion. You've got hyperphasing units coming in and out. There's a Nightbringer so far. The Immortals are blasting things with the Tesla. The Canoptic Wraiths are moving in. And we've not even gone through, well, probably half the list. So there's a lot for, that your opponent needs to look out for. And by the time, like, okay, they start targeting your warriors. Maybe you lose half of them. At that stage, the Nightbringer or the Wraiths and so on have probably made their way into where they want to go. And your opponent is going to have to change targets. They're going to have to say the Nightbringer is now a, an urgent priority. The warriors can wait. But when you're reanimating, even though it is slower, we're still slow reanimating, getting back our warriors, bringing back models with OC2 a man, and just keeping hold of our primary scoring, which I think is important. Their shooting is okay, but if you wanted to use them to do cleanse or anything like that, that involves you know giving up their shooting, you can do. We will have units to deal with that in this list, but you can if you wanted to, to do that. So that is why the warriors in 200 points for a meat shield. Maybe that's pricey, but they're not just a weak little screen. They are actually shooting and OC2 a man. So I think it's okay, and so far they've done me well. Next on the list, I've got three units of three Canoptic Scab Swarms. Now, before I go on, if any points changes do occur, these are probably going to be the sacrificial lambs. These were like the added extras at the end. I've got 120 points. What should I get? Let's get three scarabs, scarab swarms. And with hyper, with the hypercrypt legion, you can bring them in and out quite easily. OC0 is a problem, but you can be doing other things. Engage in all fronts. Investigate signal behind enemy lines. Deploy teleport hermas. Area denial. Cleanse. And so on. In fact, one of them you need the objective. Is it area denial or cleanse? I always get them mixed up. But yeah, you get my drift. They can do those objectives that don't actually require you to be holding an objective. So that's why I've got three of them. But if we needed to cut any points out because a point increases, this is where we can do it. But the moving 10, always advance them unless you want to charge. But really, I don't think you need to with a three-man unit. So just always advance them. So that's going to be 10 plus D6 inches movement. The feeder mandibles aren't doing anything, really. They're not doing anything. You're going for lethal hits, but... It's a three-man team, you can't expect much. Even if you explode one, yeah, that might do a bit of work. You probably end up losing the entire unit, so it won't be coming back. They're only in three-man units. The Chittering Swarm may be useful, but it's, it's very situational with, a th again, a three-man team. Because you've got, you can minus one from the OC if you're within engagement range, but you've got to survive, haven't you? That's the problem. When there's only three of them, they can die quite easily. What I like to do with my scarabs is I position one unit in each of my quarters in the, in the corners. That's just an anti deep strike kind of unit because your opponent normally can't come in within nine inches unless there's some cosmic precision stratagem or something. So it kind of nullifies opponents coming in from those quarters. The central area will have stuff anyway, so I'm not too worried about that. But we've got a third one there as a spare that can go out and do stuff. It will just be a sacrificial lamb, I suppose. Now, instead of one of these units, I'm, I could have potentially opted for a Royal Warden and stuck that Royal Warden maybe with the Warriors so they can fall back and shoot and all that stuff. But I wanted to make use of some, you know, probing kind of units with these Canoptic Scab Swarms. So that's why I've gone with three units. Next, I've got two units of five Death Marks for 130 points. Death Marks in this detachment are probably one of the best, if not the best unit in my opinion. They've got Deep Strike and they're only 65 points for 5. Deep Strike is the main part there because they can Deep Strike in anywhere on the battlefield and then on your opponent's turn, if they're not within engagement range, you just take them out again. And then you get your cards, see your cards, and then they go and do it. They're only on small bases and there's only a 5-man unit as a maximum. You know, Maybe you've lost some. They're easy to get in and out. I also like the fact that they've got the Hyperphase Hunter's ability. So if your opponent tries to do some deep striking shenanigans on you, if they're within 18 inches, you can shoot them for nothing, for free, once per turn. So that's a nice bonus. Their main go-to thing here, though, is the ranged weapon of the Synaptic Disintegrators with heavy and precision. Now, you're not going to make much of the heavy weapon, of the heavy keyword, because you've, you're going to be hyper-phasing in. So you're probably still hitting on threes, but it's got precision, so you may as well target a character if you can within 36 inches. It's only strength 5, minus 2 AP, 2 damage, but if you've got 2 units of 5 of them, with, that's going to be a total of 10 shots. You should get some through. You should get some through. These guys are just the ultimate scoring machines for this detachment. This detachment, because again, 
Deploy teleport hammers. They got it. Investigate signal, which is where you need to get to the corners of the, the battlefield. Easy. I mean, you could use, use them like with a strategic reserve unit, I suppose. They could just walk on. That's not as hard. But you've got the option that they're flexible. They can do pretty much everything. Assassination is another one they can deal with, and so on. Now let's get on to the heavy hitters of this list. Starting off with a Doomsday Arc. 200 points for the Doomsday Arc. It's sort of a light to semi-heavy vehicle. Toughness 9. This is why I say light. It's got 3 plus armor, the 4 plus invulnerable save, and 14 wounds, which I think is good. It's all about the Doomsday Cannon though. It's got blast, it's got heavy, and if you do remain stationary for that heavy weapon, you're going to get dev wounds as well. 72 inch range, so you plant this at the very back of the battlefield, on in the center area. You want to get the most scope as you can, you want to see everything in the battlefield, and of course you're also covering the central area for deep strike and stuff like that. D6 plus 1 shots, with blast, don't forget. Hitting on threes, but with heavy, don't forget, so that could be twos, it will be twos, because you're not going to move it. Strength 18, you're pretty much wounded on threes, if not twos, against everything. Minus 4 AP, which is brilliant. Most things are 3 plus armor saves or worse, unless there's an inward save, of course. And the damage being 4 is nice. Flat 4 is just what you need, really. You then got the Gorse Flayer arrays on the sides, which are going to do some light work on the standard infantry. So that's basically the flays from the Necron Warriors. So you've got 10 in total, or 20 shots if you're within rapid fire range. But really, it's all about that cannon, and it will do work alongside some of the other items in this list, which we're going to go over in a moment. But yeah, stick it on your home objective, don't move it, there's no need. Next, I've got three individual units here. So three individual Locust Heavy Destroyers. And I'll explain why I've done this in a moment. But that's 150 points for the three. I've gone with the Gorse Destructors. Now, normally, I like to take the Exterminators. I take them in a three-man unit, though. But when I take my Gorse Destructors, I now take them in singles. So what is the Gorse Destructor if you're not sure? 48 inch range, it's got heavy again, so if you don't move it's a plus one. Lethal hits, sometimes you get it, sometimes you don't, you don't necessarily need it. Because your strength is 14, minus 4 AP, and the damage is just a flat 6. When they get through, they slap. It is hit and miss with one shot a man, you've got three men. If you're firing against monsters and vehicles, you're re-rolling wound rolls of a 1, which is always nice. Because that's likely going to be the target. You're not going to be shooting against a standard guardsman with strength 14. It's going to be something big and bad. But why three individual models and not one unit of three of them? Now what I found when I take a unit of three, I tend to sort of have them behind some sort of terrain feature. I don't like to have things out in the open that are, you know, my big heavy hitters. And what tends to happen is one of them is always out of line of sight. And then you've got to move the unit. And then you lose the heavy keyword because you've moved the unit. Which is, it's a pain in the butt and it happens to me time and time and time again. Now when you've got three individual units that are dotted around in your deployment area, first of all your opponent is going to really struggle hiding something good against all three points. Second of all, you don't need to move them because you're not going to have this terrain that's blocking one out of three of the models because all three should be, you know, there. But if you've got a large terrain feature, I don't know, maybe it's a large mountain, a large pyramid or whatnot, if you've got a three-man team, it's very easy for your opponent to just put, you know, a tank behind it. You literally cannot see it. You're going to have to move out, maybe out again. And maybe you lose two turns of shooting against the juicy target and you're going to have to waste it against something not as, it's not, it's not as efficient if you're going to shoot it somewhere else. Having it in three separate points your opponent is going to struggle to hide it. So that's why I do that now, and it's worked for me so far. Then we come on to the last unit in this list, and it is going to be the Necron Monolith. Now, when I first put the Monolith in this list, it wasn't meant for competitive play. That's before I managed to score a couple of perfect games. It was meant to be just to see how it runs, because I've said on, on, on a few videos already, you don't need the monolith really for the Hypercrypt Legion. It's okay, some of the stratagems do relate to the monolith, but the detachment rule alone is good enough. Why spend 350 points on this one big model? So I put it in the list anyway, I've got to try things out, that's what I do. And it was really good, it was actually really good. So I've, I've got to be honest here, and I've got to say, 
Yeah, I liked it. So let's talk about the monolith then. Toughness 13, it's gone down in toughness, it's still very tough. 2 plus armor, 22 wounds. OC 8, in case you get on an objective. That's decent, that's pretty good. The death rays are the weapons that I took. So you got 4 death rays here with sustain hits D3. I managed to, I think every single turn of shooting, I always managed to get 1 6. So you're getting an extra D3 shots, and it always sort of gave me my shots back, if not gave me one extra. So you're getting those, you're hitting on threes, strength 12, minus 4, wait, minus 4 AP, D6 plus 1 damage. It, that was doing alright. It took out a lot of stuff that I fought against, it was doing enough. Then you've got the Particle Whip, which is Blast, Devastating Wounds, 3 D6 attacks. So what's that, an average of 10, 11, is that 10, 11? Something around that, that sort of way. Strength 8, minus 1 AP, 2 damage. It's just absolutely removing Marines, or, or the equivalent. 2 damage is brilliant. Blast and dead wounds. Yeah, in fact, we forgot about blast, didn't we? So it's, what is it? An average of, say, 10, 11 shots without the blast? So it gets nasty. It can defend itself in melee with the Portal of Exile. You do have to hit with it now, but it's strength 8, minus 2 AP, 3 damage. So... You know, charge it at your own peril because it will it will lash back. And the Eternity Gate, which is all the fun and games that the Monolith brings, by bringing a infantry unit either from reserves or from somewhere else on the battlefield. You're going to be placing it wholly within six inches of the Monolith, but they can't charge. Now, if you've noticed, this entire list doesn't really have much in terms of charging. That's infantry anyway. There's no Scorpion Destroyers. There's no Lich Guard. There's no Triumph Praetorians. The only ones that could were the Night Ringer and the Wraiths. None of them can use this ability. So I'm not really bothered about the, the fact that we can't declare a charge. It's more about move, movement of models. But the Monolith has got a lot of synergy with this attachment. You've got stratagems to give it a 4 plus invulnerable save. Because that's it's going to be targeted. You've got the Cosmic Precision. Because it is a, quite a bulky model. So getting it you know 9 inches away from enemy models if you deep strike it in. That's quite tricky. But if you use Cosmic Precision... It's only three inches away, which means it will fit its big rear end into play, not a problem. The Eternity Gate will be used for the Immortals and the Warriors in particular, just moving them around the battlefield, especially the Warriors, warriors as they are a meat shield, so you could be bringing them over and just shielding off a large area, as you see fit. What else have we got with the Stratagems? We've got the Hyperphase Recall you could use. It is 2 CP though. So if your opponent shoots one of our infantry models away, so again, if you lose one immortal or one warrior from those units, you can pull them off the battlefield and put them by your monolith within six, effectively using your eternity gate, but in your opponent's turn. Two CP. You've got the dimensional corridor for another two CP again. That allows the units to come out and charge from the eternity gate. We don't need it. I'm just saying it in case you change a unit out for, say, Lich Guard or something. Quantum Deflection we mentioned, and Entropic Damping, it's to pretty much give your opponent's weapons hazardous, which I'm not a big fan of. So yeah, I don't really need to go over that. Cosmic Precision we spoke about, Quantum Deflection we spoke about, Reanimation Crips could use that in, in reserves, I suppose, if you're doing your hyperphasing stuff. But all in all, this hyperphase, hyperphasing ability, I think, is where it's all about, where it's all at. You just got to not forget it, especially if you're playing competitively. Your opponent may not let you go back and do it. If you're playing friendly or just in your local gaming clubs, I'm sure your opponent will allow it. So it's in your end of your opponent's turn. And if you're playing a 2000 point game, it will be three units, up to three units that you can take off the battlefield, as long as they're not within engagement range, and you bring them back in. So with this list, what I would like to select, the death marks are a definite. But turn one, they're probably not on the board because they're probably deep striking in. So turn one, you're probably looking at the Scarabs, maybe the Nightbringer if it's not on. It depends what you put in strategic reserves from the beginning. But then when it's turn two onwards, you're looking at your, your death marks. And yeah, your opponent is going to have this... They're going to be caught in two minds. Do we leave the back area, our home deployment zone, empty and go charging towards, you know, the the heavy hitting things, the Locust Heavy Destroyers, the Monolith and so on, or do they defend their back lines and that means we can't be deep striking in. So they've got to make a decision. They can't have it both ways unless they've got a massive Horde army, which if they have got a Horde army, then that's a whole different ball game. We're going to have to use the Night Scythe with the, the Sweep profile maybe, 
the Immortals are going to have to do a lot of work, the Warriors may even have to do a bit of work, and the Wraiths, they're not equipped with the correct weapon, I suppose. They've not got the whip coils, but they can still do enough. You should eventually cut the units down, and yeah, by once they're gone, you've pretty much won at that point anyway. But guys, that is my 2000 point Hyper Crypt Legion list. Let me know how you would improve it. What I wanted to do, I'm, in fact, I'm not going to tell you what I would improve because I want to hear your guys' thoughts and comments. But there are a few units in this list that I thought were either not needed. Or could be changed for something better although i did score a perfect game so it's hard to say it's hard to say that but yeah let me know down in the comments below or on the discord if you are on the discord so guys yeah if you want to see any more lists let me know what detachment you want me to look at i'll see what i can do